Hello and welcome to my second video on regular expressions in Excel VBA. In the first video I showed how to set up and use regular expressions in VBA code. If you haven't seen that video then I would recommend that you check it out first. If you regularly deal with data and you haven't heard of regular expressions before then I think you will be amazed at what they can do. And in this video I'll be showing you how to create basic regular expressions. There will be lots of examples so that you can easily follow along and see exactly how they work. Now if you find this video useful, then please click on the like button. So now let's get started with some basic regular expressions. So this is the code that we're going to be using today. So let me just explain the code and then we'll get on and we'll create some regular expressions. So the first part of the code, the dim line, is how we create our regular expression objects. Now the second two lines are how we set flags. And I'll be looking at those flags a little bit later. So the next line is the ones that will be changing. And this is the text and the pattern. So the text is basically the string of text that we're searching in. And the pattern then is the regular expression that we're using to search through that string. After we have the pattern set, what we do is we call execute. And what execute does is it returns all the occurrences of the regular expression in the string. Now it places them in a match collection, which is very similar to a VBA collection. And that's exactly how we'll treat it. And the final lines you see down here are simply how we print out the results of our regular expression. So as I said, the only thing that's going to change is the lines with the pattern and the text. So let's go ahead and run this code so we can see an example of what exactly it does. And you can see that it basically found all the Marys that are in this string. So if our pattern is some set of characters, it basically looks in the string for all the occurrences of that text. So let's try this again with Peter. And when we run the code, you see that it found Peter in the text. So there was just one occurrence. You can see that it says number of items one. So now we're going to take a look at the flags for the regular expression object. And the two we have here are global and ignore case. So already when we ran the code with global true, you can see that it returned Mary. So it returned all the cases of Mary or all the occurrences. Now let's set it false and see what it does. And you can see that it just returned one. So when we set global to false, it just returns one occurrence. Let's try it again with the letter A. So if we run the code with the letter A and global set to false, it just returns one A. Now if we set global to true, it will return three. And so basically that's what global is. Now in most cases, you're probably just going to set global to true. But it depends, of course, on the individual circumstances. So now let's have a look at the second one. So the second one, ignore case, is kind of obvious. This is basically telling the regular expression search whether to ignore the case or not. So we've set it to false. So it's not going to ignore case. So let's set the last M in for Mary to a small one. And when we run this code, you'll see that it just brings back the first two M's. So it doesn't bring back the third one because it's lower case. And now if we set ignore case to true, you can see that it brought them all back. So these are the two main flags that we use. And you can see that they're pretty straightforward. So let's start looking at the regular expressions themselves. And we're going to use the caret symbol that you see here. And when we run this code, it will return Mary. Now the reason is, is because the caret symbol means that the text string starts with this. So in other words, return us the part of this text that starts with this. Now if we change Mary to Mark, you'll see that it doesn't return anything. So in other words, it doesn't find the pattern in the string because the string now doesn't begin with the four letters M, A, R, Y. Now if we want to find characters at the end of a string, then we use the dollar sign. And so in this case, we're putting in Mary. Now let's change it to John, just so that we've only got one of these in the string and that it's very clear. So when we change the string that we're looking for to John, it will look for John at the end of the string. And if it finds it, it will return John, otherwise it won't return anything. So you can see that in this case, it returned John. Now if we put one in between J and O, you see now that it returned no items. It didn't find John at the end of the string. So these are very simple items that we use 
in regular expressions. But it's good to start with these so that you get an idea of exactly what regular expressions are doing. So if we want to return the exact string itself, well then we can use these characters together. We're basically saying the string starts with Mark Peter and the string ends with Mark Peter. And you can see that it returned Mark Peter. Now, if we have other values in the string, say we start with Jack and we have a name Jane, for example, at the end. If we run this, it doesn't return anything because it, the string doesn't start and end with Mark Peter. So you see it returned zero. Now, if we want a, just a match within the full string, then we don't use any symbols as we've seen before. And this will return one. So now we're going to look at picking alternative characters. So let's start with the simple example again. We want to find B in this string. So we just put in B in the pattern and it returns three Bs. Now imagine we want to return anywhere where B is preceded by A. Again we just put in A, B and you can see it returns two results. So if we use square parentheses like these ones here. This means that any character within the square parentheses, if it comes before B, then it's valid. So you can see it returned AB, DB, and AB. So the square parentheses means basically any one of these characters. So you can see we've changed the last one to CB, and in this case, it returns AB, AB, and DB. So now we're gonna change, we're gonna put C in here. So any one of A, C, and D. And let's return, and it returns everything. You can see that it returns all four because all four of them are preceded by either A, C, or D. Now, it will become quite cumbersome to be always having to put in all the letters. So we can set the range by using dash like this. So this basically means A to D, and you can see that this also returned everything. So let's just change one of these to E, just to make sure that it's working as it should. And when we run our code again, you can see that it didn't bring that one back. It just brought the ABs and the DBs back. So let's change our string now so that it has a capital letter. So it has a capital D. And if we only wanted to bring back, say, all small letters, we can do A to small, small A to small Z. And then when we run our code, you'll see that it didn't bring back the B with the capital D before it. It brought back the other three results. So this is very useful indeed when we want to select from one of a range of characters. Now, if we wanted to do capitals, we can do the same. We can do A to Z. And we run it in this case, and what it's going to bring us back is just the one with D, the capital D, before it. And you can see that it did. Now, if we want to say these characters don't precede the B, well, then what we do is we use the same caret symbol that we used at the, to signify the start of a string. But here it means something different. When it's within this parenthesis, it means not A. So you can see that this returned all the cases where B wasn't preceded by A. Just keep in mind that the caret is a bit different in this situation. And here it returns anything that isn't between A and Z. So you can see setting the characters or the characters range before a letter is very powerful indeed. And this can allow us to do a lot of very different things with regular expressions. So now we're going to look at an example of using what we've learned so far on a worksheet. So in this worksheet, we've got a bunch of file names and we want to do three separate tasks. So the first one is find all the names that start with report, then find all the names that end with .csv, and finally, find any that have 2019 somewhere in the name, but it must be preceded by the letters A and E. So let's get started with the first one. So if we want to find a string starting with something, so what we do is we use the correct symbol followed by the characters that we want to find at the start of the string and these are obviously report. So let's step through the code and see exactly what happens. So we set our pattern here, and then we check the first one. We use test in this case rather than execute. So what test does is basically tells us if the pattern is matched or not. 
It's matched in the first one because it starts with report and the second and the third, but the fourth one you'll see doesn't. So this will return false because it only starts with REP. And so we continue on and all the rest return true. So now the second one that we want to do is .csv. So in this case we do .csv and we use the dollar sign. So this means that it ends with .csv. And we'll just run straight through the code here. And you'll see that it's just the last one is false because this is the only one that doesn't end with .csv. So you can see the ones that fail I have in red text. So for the final one, we want to put in 219. So 2019, that's what we want to find, but it must be preceded by letters between A and E. So we use the square parentheses and the dash and say A to uppercase E. And then when we run this code, you'll see that three of them fail because they have X, P and F respectively before 2019. So in this video, we covered the basics of using regular expressions. We covered how to find if a string exists in a string, how to check if a string starts with a set of characters, and how to check if a string ends with a set of characters. And we also looked at how to check for alternative characters or a range of characters. Now what you may have noticed is that we have no method for using all these together in one pattern. So for example, in the last example that we used in the worksheet, we ran three different patterns. So imagine how useful it would be if we could put them all together. So we can do this using quantifiers, and I'll be covering quantifiers in the next video. And these are really useful because they allow us to place multiple rules in one pattern. If you liked the video, please hit the like button as this really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to hear about my latest videos, then click on the subscribe button below. Now don't forget to download the free Excel VBA Vitals cheat sheet from the description. Just go to the description and click on the link. So if you've got any comments, questions or queries, please leave them in the comments section below. So see you on the next video.